you guys are back for part two, I guess. You up for more shenanigans with me? You guys want to still continue this countdown? Today we're starting off right at number six, and we're working our way down. Maybe we can get through it all today? Don't even know. But let's get to it. Now, rounding out the number six spot, we're going back down to South America. It's another South American species. Now, I told you guys, some of these fish on the list might surprise you. Some of these things might be common, some of them might not be. But a lot of the stuff that you guys like, that definitely is on Biggs' list, may not. But number six spot is a beautiful acara known as Bergekina vitata. And basically, this species has gone through a ton of name changes. It's actually very plentiful in the hobby. It's gone through, it was originally described as a caravitata, and it's gone through many different names under that. And then I believe it was in about 19, um, I think it's about 1981, 80, 82, something like that. The Swedish ichthyologist, Dr. Sven Kolander, renamed it as an Aquidens, and it was Aquidens paragiensis. And then after later examinations of materials and stuff, I think it was about 86, they, he basically re-revised it and said, no, that is a junior synonym. So it went back, and now it's called Bergekina vitata. And Bergekina vitata is an absolutely outstanding fish. If you've got something like a 20 or 30 gallon tank, maybe a little bit bigger. This isn't a cara that's only gonna get about 12 centimeters long. You know, it's an outstanding and outstanding fish. It's easy to care for, it's an omnivore. It eats almost anything. It just likes normal clean water parameters. But the real trick is to breed it, it's super, super easy. But that's not the rub. If you breed, you could keep it in this tank and it would breed on rocks, it'd breed in a flower pot, it would breed on the side of the tank, it would open up the bottom of the substrate and it'd breed on that too. Easy, easy, easy to care for. But the most fascinating about this fish is its behavior is if you actually give it what it wants and you give it the type of habitat that it really, really needs, this fish will absolutely flourish. And what I mean by that is this species has evolved to adapt to live in the Amazon basin. It comes from the Madagascar region of Brazil and it's adapted to live in a very, very specific habitat. The catfish in the Amazon dominate the river. So a lot of the smaller fish, like this Bergekina vitata, would inhabit the shallows. And when the flooded forests uh, expand into the forest and you get all this water and all this leaf litter and stuff, that's when this fish truly shines. Being a movable platform spawner, it'll rip a leaf off an Amazon sword plant. It'll use a lot of these discarded leaves and botanicals and stuff and they will actually spawn on that leaf surface and then it'll take that leaf and the male will grab it and it'll swim with that spawn attached to the a, uh, attached to the leaf and it'll swim it through the water column thereby aerating the and bringing oxygen to the eggs. A lot of cichlids you see they'll spawn on something and then they'll fan the eggs to bring oxygen to it. This species here has evolved to live in areas with very very deprived oxygen levels so it actually capitalize an area where a lot of other fish can't live and this one unique adaptation is absolutely phenomenal. So find yourself some of these. They're available at the pet store. They'll probably be under Aquidens paragiensis. I call it the, the banded comb tail acara because the, they get these beautiful fin extensions on all the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the rays of the tail. Absolutely breathtaking fish to see. Not only in an aquarium, it's not gaudy color. It's mostly yellow over a brown base with some beautiful banding. But if you give it in a nice tank with some beautiful woods and rocks and stuff, give it some leaves and trust me you'll love this fish as much as i do so number six is bergekina vitata oh we're getting there we're at number five that's right we've cracked the top five already so in the five spot i might have alluded to it a little bit earlier in regards to my past earlier years of aquarium keeping and what i kind of specialized then if you know what i'm talking about it's definitely a cichlid from lake tanganyika I couldn't have this list without a cichlid from Lake Tanganyika, and I had to really think long and hard as to which one would fit that list for me. Now, I gotta give you guys some history. When I was importing Tanganyikan cichlids, we're talking in the mid 70s, early 80s, and stuff like that. When I was involved in getting these things in, we were getting in mixed boxes of trophies and trying to blind date everything. You know, if you remember, if you've watched any of the videos that I've done with some of the different fish farmers, my good friend, uh, Mr. Rick uh, Biro down at Florida, uh, and he talks about how these cichlids came in from like Malawi, you'd get the erratus male in and then you get the erratus female in, or you get the, the male Kenyai and the female Kenyai, and they would count them as different fish because they were different colored. 
Well, in Tanganyika, that was somewhat the same thing, but it was kind of, you were getting these bags. It was just a mixed lot of stuff. Now, a lot of the stuff, everybody loves the Bouchard eye types, and the, the lake is known for all the different types of trophies and all the different types of neolamprologians. My fish ain't in that group. <laughs> and another thing about the history of this, 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 my fish keeping with Tanganyika is back then, none of the open water stuff had ever really been ex come out. So I'd never even heard of any of the Benthochromis, uh, Nanthochromis paramaxilis. I'd never even seen any of these fish. And to this day, I've never kept any of those fish either yet. And I say yet, because one day I will. But my fish, I remember looking back in the days and trying to get this one fish out of the lake. And back then it was known only as one fish. Now it seems that it has fairly good distribution throughout the lake and each location is decidedly different. And some of them are insanely expensive and some of them are readily available. But they all come from very, very deep water. Of course, in the number five spot, the, the incredible Siphotilapia frontosa. Now, this is such an impressive fish to have in an aquarium. It's like owning a pet Oscar, but it's just so graceful and rather slow moving through the tank, but it doesn't have to be. It can be like a rattlesnake when it wants to be. But having a colony of frontosas with those beautiful long trailers, my exposure to them was strictly the Burundi one, which, and I still think to this day, that classic bright, bright white and black is still the absolute most beautiful of all the frontosas. You can like all these new ones that are coming out with the purples and the blues and the yellows. Go ahead. I think they're all beautiful. But for me, the number five spot is the beautiful frontosa cichlid. Still counting down? In the four spot, this fish took a lot of questioning for me. I didn't know where this one was going to place because it was such an important fish to me growing up. But uh, basically, this book came about from Tetra Press, written by Ginny Sanford, back in about 1990, 1991. And I got my copy as soon as it came out. And it, was, it opened up an entirely new world. Now, you also got to understand, my fish keeping at that time in the early, early 90s was absolutely what I'll call my golden era of fish keeping. That was absolutely the pinnacle of all the new stuff. That's when they were just opening up the Shingu River system, the Tonkinan River system, all these new river systems in Brazil, and they were starting to explore these things. And the bevy of hot fish that were coming out, all those weird plecos, all those weird pikes, all that incredible, incredible diversity was coming out, and it was hitting the hobby super, super fast and furious. Every order you'd be getting something else new in. But one fish that had always eluded me, and now it's very, very plentiful in the hobby, it's, it's relatively easy to keep as long as you've got an extremely large tank. As you can see, the name of the book is Tank Busters. Now the fish in question, I, don't ha I haven't had this pair of fish for, for, you know, since, since the very, very early 90s, but I, I still remember them vividly. So without question, in the number four spot is Chronoherus umbraferus, the absolute stunning Umbi cichlid. Now I remember this fish here, and the reason this fish made my list was not just because it's such an amazing fish to keep, it's such, it's such incredible behavior, such incredible strength, and then you have that real docile nature of watching the pair take care of their offspring. But absolutely hell on wheels if you were another fish trying to get into their area while they were doing that. You don't stand a chance. But the reason that this fish made the list for the story side of it for me was I remember back then when I stopped touring, I stopped doing music, I had, I, had, I, had, I had money and I didn't know what to do with money at the time. So one thing that I did do that was in my fish keeping hobby is I gave some money to a, to a group that was going down to collect in different areas in South, South America, in Colombia, and explore certain areas of the Rio Magdalena. And the only fish that I wanted at the time, this fish was unheard of in the trade, was... Uh, at the time, Cacatei umbraferis, now known as Chronoheros. And that fish there, I gave him, a, you know, it wasn't a lot of money at the time, but I gave him some money. I says, all I want in return is I want you to find me that fish if you can. And they found it. But the story was is that they couldn't find it the entire trip. And on the very, very last day, they finally found a pair guarding fry. And they waded in uh, to try and catch it. Now, they wanted fry. They didn't want adults because you can't ship adults back. The chance of survival is very, very small. So they wanted to ship back some young. And the young were at a perfect size. So they waded in to try and catch some of the young. And apparently, the male umby took offense to this. So you wouldn't think of a tropical fish that we would keep in an aquarium as being dangerous. Well, this thing took a chunk out of the guy that tried to harvest some fry, took a chunk out of his behind, and he had to get stitches. <laughs> but Biggs got his fish. 
<laughs> that's all that matters really right that's all that matters so without question an absolute incredible fish an absolute monster in a tank you need a monster size aquarium to take care of this healthy fish uh, to grow it up to be as stunning as the videos that you saw of justin's without question number four is chrono heroes umbra ferris well did I give you guys some surprises in that little grouping? I don't know. I just, you know, you guys, I told you guys, this took me days and days and days and hours and hours and hours of deliberation of just trying to narrow it down. But every single one of those fish has made the list has a point near and dear in my heart as a story behind it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to stop for today. You're going to come back next one. Maybe next time we're going to finish it all off. Don't know. Until then, my friends, take care.